draw between uh, Caruana and Carlsen in the first round. And now we're going over the game with an engine. So Tal is here and Joseph Levin next to me. And uh, okay, Caruana played e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6. We're going to skip the theoretical part uh, for the sake of uh, saving time and there's not much else to add. So this is considered at least by the top engines nowadays and uh, let's say by people who played it slightly more convenient for white. This position, knight h2 planning to push f4. Uh, my weak engine right now says it's uh, equal, but I'm not sure that's entirely correct. I want to go through the more juicy part. First of all, the stream uh, in Liches uh, was wrong and showed g5, which I think is a mistake. Let's see. No, not too big of a it's mistake. It's not as bad as we thought it was looking yeah. at it over the board. Yeah. But h5 has to be played now, which is a move that's not so wow. natural. Yeah, that's I'd say. Okay, so bishop e6. Right. So in fact, g5 wasn't played. That was some sort of a yeah, screaming error. Yeah, rook f2. Error. Rook f2 is the engine's top move, uh, even though queen d2 is the same valuation. So, well done, Fabi. h6 is the best move. And queen d6 fails to... Not knight g4 as I predicted. Ah, but it's funny. We, I, th I feel like we learned something even though it wasn't the correct example. And yeah. I have this theory that if you learn all the best, let's say, principles, with all the wrong examples, you still become you're a still very on the strong. right principles. Yeah, absolutely. And and vice versa, if you have the the right examples and the wrong principles, then you'll become terrible. Yeah, absolutely, no question yeah. about it. So, and, and, and that's true across uh, in, across any in, any uh, field. endeavor. Yeah. yeah. So, rook f two, h six was correct. Queen d two, g five, rook f one, queen d six, knight g four. Black is better after long castle. So instead. Knight f3 or a4 was stronger. Uh, mm -hmm. Knight g4. Uh, and uh, now uh, Castle's long was correct. Black is better. He's threatening some h5 related ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, white has to be very careful. For that reason, Caruana started playing knight f6. He was under slight time pressure. And interestingly enough, knight f6. Yeah, he's yeah. still oh. better for black. And Carlsen played yeah. very precisely, f6, bishop f7, still holding on. And knight f8, even though it was a very practical move, actually gave in some of the advantage. So, probably the best way to play. No, f6 was one of the best moves, yeah? I don't see a big difference, so... Yeah, seems like f6 was a good move. King b7, bishop f7. It's just the engine is not deep enough. I think overall, all the moves so far make a lot of sense. Instead of bishop takes h5, bishop g6 may have been a, yeah. a better move, but okay. So far, I really like how Carlsen played. I felt like black has the advantage. Rook takes f4 was a very interesting uh, exchange stack we didn't even consider. And right. neither did Caruana. I wonder if Carlsen will comment on it uh, at some point. Yeah, I'd be, I'm very conference. interested to see the... Uh, the yeah, the but post. this is a very strong exchange sack. Now it's obvious to me that I see it, but... Uh, well, I didn't even think about it during the game. So rook g2, rook g8. Rook g4 may have been a powerful defending defensive move, planning to go queen g2 and recapture with a pawn. He played queen e2, takes, takes, queen e6. Black still has the initiative and... Queen e8 was precise, bishop c7, every single move by Carlsen looks really good and at this point black is winning. And this wow, position... Wait a minute, wait a minute, what happened here? Yeah, this is the position. Remember I we said... We were talking about this said, with, with g2. I said queen g2, there is rook f2. Right. And queen h4, there is uh, e5. Right. But, and, and I mentioned that white's idea after knight e5, after queen e5 or queen f6 is knight g4 back. Mm -hmm. But I guess what both of them missed is that if you just go here then h5 and rook g3 is coming yeah, there is and the no queen move. is coming from the other angle and uh, let, let's just continue with the line just for the sake of uh, to make it clear so let's put it here i think the most active move is knight h6 rook g3 queen h5 queen a1 check 
Followed oh, yeah, by this is a disaster. Followed by Queen takes a two, and then White is in deep trouble. Yeah. So Carlsen had a win in this position after h5. Carlsen could win with Queen e5 followed by Queen c3 or Queen b2. Uh, queen f6 was probably equally strong. Sorry, where are we? No, no, instead of h5. This position. h5 was still very strong. Rook f2. But here he had to play Queen g7 with the same kind of idea to play over the diagonal. Instead he went Queen g1. And then h4, which was probably the critical mistake, as yeah, I mentioned. Yeah, and you mentioned it at the time, and we were yeah. both a little bit surprised. It's a very it committal just, move. It's a very committal move, is exactly and, what you said. Okay, it looks like a, a logical move, because the h-pawn is hanging, but it's black who caused it in the first place. So instead of putting it there, maybe queen e5 was a better choice, or avoiding rook g2 altogether with queen g7, he only needed to calculate this <laughs> very simple line. Yeah. <laughs> so to speak. That the king cannot move anywhere because there is a check. Yeah, knight f1, queen a1, king e2, king b7, of course. Yeah, the obvious king b7. <laughs> well, we talked about queen b7 several times. What's the king threat? King b7. b5. What's the threat? I just want to play queen a1 and take. Okay, so Carlsen was completely winning with queen g7 here or queen e5 in the previous move. And then he played this h4 inaccuracy. Again, bishop e5 was winning. And king b7 was still good. And here rook g3 was another chance to, to win the game after knight takes g3. H takes g3. And queen a1. Hmm. And bishop e5. So we were kind of blind to, you know, what's interesting about this yeah. is that we talked earlier in the game, we talked about the weakness in the, along the black, along the dark squares, and then when it came time to utilize the weaknesses in the dark squares, we abandoned the whole concept and we never yeah, even looked at that. Yeah, probably we were talking with the people in the chat or something. <laughs> so b5 uh, is a good move, threatening b4 and maybe bringing the queen over through the first rank. Mm. B5 was a very powerful move. Queen G7 was not so bad, but he had to go back, so it was. <laughs> so, yeah, computers are silly this way. So, B5 was the precise move here. Planning to go B4. After Queen G7, so this combination of H4 and Queen G7, and mistakes do usually come in pairs, created uh, a relatively easy to defend position for Caruana, which we assume by now we managed to to get away with a draw, but we'll yeah have they have they, they still they, not uh, they're still playing they're still playing so, guys unbelievable yeah but at no point White had any advantage but Caruana defended very precisely I believe a three is the best move unbelievable unbelievable b four yeah he spotted this idea of a three and b four I am a little bit disappointed that I didn't even think of that. But, okay, I'm used yeah. to being disappointed. <laughs> and, and this basically takes yeah. us to where we are now. Yeah, which is woohoo! Which is all the way over here. Yeah. And, um... So well, let's I mean, summarize uh, the winning chances that Black had. Like, so probably the most crucial moment. And I want you to, to notice uh, one small thing that, uh, that we didn't discuss too much during the stream. But I mentioned it a couple of times, if you can recall. I, I use the term critical moment mm -hmm. and that's something that's very difficult to learn but uh, I want you to notice that when I said it in the stream I knew that this was the most critical moment in sure. the game absolutely I saw the time on the clock I saw Carlson was thinking I realized h5 was hanging and now we have to make a decision that's a take it or leave it mm -hmm. and this is the moment where black has to delve into deep thought even if he has 20 minutes he could sit and think for 12 minutes just right. to be precise and critical moments, usually there's one or two during the game. And if you recognize it, that's a huge step for your improvement okay. and increases your chances to find the best move. The second step is to make the effort to do so. So sure. I don't want to blame Carlsen for not making the effort, but it's really below his level to come up with any random move that that keeps the grip on White's position. Queen G7 is a move that he can play in bullet, and I'm not joking. Mm -hmm. he, he makes these kind of moves with his eyes closed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
but maybe not with his eyes With his open. brain closed, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so Queen G7. Yeah, it doesn't make sense with chess players to, to use this term. Mm -hmm. So Queen G7 here, and also here he kind of rushed with H5. I don't remember. Yeah, he took less than three minutes for it, and Caruana just went backwards. So I want you to know that uh, there is another principle in practical chess that when you have the advantage, or more precisely the initiative, and your opponent has time pressure and starts to move backwards, that's usually the right time to strike the iron while it's hot. Mm -hmm. So here, I spotted quite quickly that queen h4 fails to e5. You should not miss any counterplay at any position. Right. And with that, actually, tactics and blitz can help a lot, but blitz first. And I also recall that queen g2 fails to rook f2, that's sure. what we mentioned. The next fine. thing that comes to mind is moving the queen to the most active square that's On left. On the board. Yeah. yeah. No, queen h4 is more active, but that's the most active that doesn't allow e5. Right, right, right. Prepares rook g3, practically forces knight g4 back. And now queen c3, this queen is much more active than that queen. And... The same applies for the queen on b2. Mm -hmm. And it's not too difficult for anyone to understand that white is in deep trouble now. Sure. Because we're attacking two pawns. White has no plan. Everything is protected. Yeah, and and, and, H5 and the, is coming. And the, and the pawns are on the back side of the king. So, yeah, so this was the first critical moment. Made a mistake. The second critical moment was here. Made another mistake with h4. The third mistake was queen g7 back. So notice that b the mistakes by both players were moves that... Uh, took their pieces backwards, even though mm -hmm. they didn't have to do so. Mm -hmm. So these are the points I want you to take. The critical Excellent. moment of the game, uh, striking the iron while it's hot, when you know that you have some good chances uh, to make progress. So you have to play the most active, straightforward move. In this case, it's queen e5, because queen h4 fails to e5. And the third concept, that's probably the most important. You do not want to move backwards. That's something you do not want to do in chess. And even if you do it and it's good, uh, you like do moving backwards is just like this committal move with the pawn here. Moving backwards is committal, you have to justify it, you have to calculate precisely. And when Yeah, I was gonna say I think that's a better way to say it is that if, if you're ever gonna make a move backward yeah. in chess, you ought to have a very, very good justification yeah. for it. Yeah. And, By the uh, way, the same thing in martial arts. If you if you're stepping backward, if your opponent is pushing you backward, you, you better have a very very good reason. Otherwise, you're basically just losing the fight. Yeah. So here you're not losing the fight, but the initiative or the sure. moment, sure, the opportunity. And what I want to mention in this regard is that when I was training with my coach uh, Ilya Botvinnik, I uh, who raised me for ten years. Uh, when I made a move backwards on my game, even if it was correct, even if I won the game, we would stop and analyze it for 15, 20 minutes. And if I didn't come up with a good enough reason, it doesn't matter what the engine said. It doesn't matter what, uh, like, my opponent, whether he agreed or not. It doesn't matter whether Carlsen was sitting next to us and uh, suggested the same move, which never happened. Uh, I still made a mistake in his eyes. And that applies to any other principle. When you make... When you break a principle, even if it's right, you're not on the right track if you cannot justify it. Well, this is how we started out the broadcast. We had a very similar thing. We said, listen, if you're going to make several moves with the same piece in the opening, there ought to be a very good justification for it. It happens to be in this line, there is. Mm -hmm. However, you, that's the point. There has to be a good justification for con, you know, consuming or wasting tempo in the, in the opening. And uh, in general, there has to be a... Uh, yes. There, there has to be... There has to be a justification. Yeah, yeah, always. When you make a move that breaks a principle or a guideline. Uh, so, last principle or let's say advanced concept that I think I kind of made up. I don't recall uh, ever reading it anywhere. But it's something that I noticed is that when you make a practical mistake in a critical position. So here, queen e5. Again, I'm speaking from Carlsen's point of view. This is an easy win. That's something he wins 10 out of 10 times mm -hmm. if he found queen e5, okay? Once you miss that, you have to find a more difficult move, mm -hmm. which is here, king b7, okay? That's not making any sense, sacrificing the pawn and then going back to g7. Sure. So, um, 
I don't remember how to say it in English, but there is a scientific term for it that's like, I think it's called a positive trend, I'm not sure. Like, the, the more, the, like once you make a mistake, it becomes more difficult not to make a mistake afterwards. So if you're on mm -hmm. the winning side mm -hmm. and you made a wrong move, then like to find the win takes more efforts more later. Def more, oh, I see. You have to show more strength right. in your chess right. skills later. Right. And uh, vice versa, if, if you're on the uh, weaker side and you make a mistake, you have to find tougher moves to mm -hmm. maintain the, the game drawn or, or close to equal, mm -hmm. to try to hold on. So every mistake uh, makes it more difficult for you to make, to, not to continue the trend of, of reducing from your position. So that's why it's the most important point uh, to... Uh, resist uh, creating difficulties for yourself is the critical moment of the game and uh, here the first critical moment uh, from black's point of view was when he should have played queen e5 here and the way to diagnose it is because white moved backwards and and uh, black has a, a variety of options that looks tempting so you have to find the most precise otherwise you have to deal with more difficulty and Carlsen can also is perfectly capable of finding queen, king b7, queen g7, but it doesn't make sense psychologically that you were so winning before, why should I make such irrational moves now? Right. You didn't know he made a mistake. And again, after c3, b5, even more difficult to find now. It makes no sense even when I see it. Rook g3, even more difficult to give up the exchange. Of course looks perfectly easy when when you see it deeply yeah, sure. in, in retrospect, front of you especially when there was an engine to help you yeah out but the... but it's it's a more committal and more difficult uh decision to uh evaluate and i want you to take it with you that in chess and in life the most uh rewarding moment to put efforts is right now otherwise it will be more difficult later so yeah yeah. Uh, and I think also I'm reminded again of something that you told me during one of our lessons, which is if there was a if there if there was an advantage at some point at, at some point and that advantage has not changed, you need to look for a way to utilize that advantage. Well into the middle game, it was clear that black had better control over the dark squares. It's something we talked about. It's a, it was the the, the Everything having to do with the bishop, the fact that he has a dark squared bishop against, etc., 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 and the funny thing about that is, not just us, Carlson, yeah, the best chess player in the world, period, abandoned the not abandoned the dark squares, abandoned the concept that had gotten him into the advantageous position in the middle game, and that's a real lesson I think for those of us who are who are weak chess players. If you fought so hard to achieve some sort of specific static advantage in the middle game, and and because it's a static advantage, it hasn't gone away, or even if it's a dynamic advantage, but it hasn't gone away, mm -hmm. keep pressing that advantage. Yeah, it's a clear guide on how to get from point A to point B, and uh, this just goes to show that uh, there isn't a human being alive who isn't susceptible to uh, the distractions that come with the. Uh, with competitive chess. Yeah, so um, one thing that I have to add, just uh, to summarize, why b5 is such a strong move? Carlsen uh, in this position already had one minute and 40 seconds, mm -hmm. according to our clocks. And that's actually the, the moment where he needed to think. And this decision here is not so difficult to be made. b5 is a difficult move, but when you ask yourself, what's the next move by white? you realize that there was no move. There is no plan. The knight cannot move, the rook cannot move, the queen cannot move. The king cannot move to b2 because then there's b5, b4. You can start with b5, but even if you waste a move with king a8, you're still winning. <laughs> so white has absolutely no idea in the position. And that's the reason why b5 and a5 and b4 is so powerful. Mm. And then improving the position. And I see. So, I see. And winning so easily. So. The only issue for Carlsen was that he had time pressure here. As I mentioned earlier, everyone looks at Caruana's time pressure. Mm -hmm. But Carlsen was thinking so long that by move 39, when he had another chance to simply squeeze slowly, 
the time pressure got the better of him, the mm-hmm. best of him, and he moved backwards, which was probably when he made his last, uh, like he lost the, his he third his, chance to win in yeah, this game. Yeah, his. Yeah. The only chance was to go back, but that's very difficult uh, uh, to do, and uh, that I don't consider it a real chance. So, uh, so I'll summarize. I said a lot of things during this video, um, but the one thing that I want you to take with you is that you have to put the maximum amount of efforts in this present moment, otherwise it will be more difficult later and you'll put more efforts and more energy in the long run and maybe even in the short term. So, and of course keep asking yourself what is going on if, it's were, if it were my opponent to move right now, what is his plan? Uh, so awareness is very important so thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video